Good morning, fellow privateers. <coughs> Good morning to those of you in Asia. It is the 22nd of July, which is just crazy. I've been away for about 10 days on holiday, which has been nice. Got a little, uh, little taste of the mountains, some hiking, biking, rafting out in Colorado. Uh, very peaceful. Need to make a move out there at some point. Came back to the Midwest. The Midwest uh, heat, heat wave that's been going on, but uh, things are cooling off a little bit. So I've been away from the screens for a bit. Spent the past few hours catching up. Dollar index hadn't done much really since I left. It is kind of funny when you take a holiday and you see how uh, markets are performing, especially in the summer, where you're generally not getting a ton of movement, uh, especially if you're a, a currency trader. Something that, uh, you know, in this low vol environment it makes it very difficult to try to even catch any multiple multi-hour to two or three day type moves. So I'm just looking at the dollar index here to start out. Um, you know, it's it's in a range like the euro. Euro is basically 111, 11450. Dollar index to me looks like call it 9850. And um, you know we did have this low last week or last month. Um, this is a weekly chart we're looking at. 95.86. So definitely some volatility last week. Um, I think centered around uh, the missteps from John Williams talking about the neutral rate should be 0.5%. Um, the dollar came under some pressure on that and then rebounded a bit. Um, so let's go over to Aussie dollar. It's had a nice move off those lows. We did have that one little pullback here. And I think that we could still sell it in front of 7,100. Um, the 200-day moving average is up there. But it is in a, you know, kind of a short-term uptrend. Market's a bit short, so there's probably some more pain. You can see the Friday reversal bar lower. Uh, we do have, there are a couple interesting bars. You know, here's Euro. So what did I go away? So that was last week. I think I left it. I think I left it around here, July 5th. And we had closed that day at 112.25. And we closed on Friday at 112.21. So I've had, you know, a little bit of a move up. But, I mean, look at the Look at how tight this is, and I, I suspect it's going to stay like this for most of the summer. Uh, the British pound, you know, in a firm downtrend, um, we went down and we tested that, you know, made some new lows. Here, let's go to the weekly. Um, who knows what that weekly low was at um, beginning of, well, when was that? Yeah, that was that first week of January close enough. We did have a, a little bounce and we closed in the upper third on the week. Um, but that one still looks in trouble. Kiwi is interesting. I was looking at this earlier. Um, let me scroll back a little bit. This is a daily. You can see where we stopped on Friday and then reversed lower after that big up day on Thursday. Right at the two thirds. So 67.85 looks like formidable resistance and um, you know, there's some daily highs there. Um, I don't mind. I don't mind being short Kiwi. Here, dollar CAD. You know, here's a daily chart. Again, I, I a lot of the stuff that I'm looking at is just going back from when I started my holidays, and thank God I wasn't trading because it looks like it's just an absolute chop fest. Um, there's dollar Swissy, dollar Yen. Nothing going on there. Dollar China, nothing going on. Um, what was I looking at?
to out here. Euro Swissy. Euro Swissy is interesting. So our privateers, my colleagues were talking about how it got just completely hammered on Friday. You see, we took out these two daily lows, 110.56, um, which had, you know, provided a decent bounce the first time, about a 100-point bounce. S&B, we suspect, will be on the bid somewhere near 110, the figure. Um, you know, maybe they're, you know, as he was saying, conspiracy theory. Maybe there's something going on. And, uh, you know, my guess it would be kind of a, a, an Iran situation. There's zero yen. That daily chart looks just heavy. Got all these lows right here. This is actually big support right here. See, we had one, two, three, four, five, six down days in Euro yen, bumping up against this big support level. Um, let's look at some of the other yen crosses. Sterling yen had a little bit of a bounce. Kiwi yen, CAD yen, nothing really there for me. Um, let's look at some of these weekly. Equity indices. There were, you know, we made new all time highs in the SP last week. 3018, I believe, was a high. Then we reversed pretty hard on Friday. It was a, it is a bearish engulfing because it's, en it's engulfing the, the body of the previous week, um, but it, we did not, we did not take out this low. It depends on how you want to talk about but there's that's what it looks like on the dailies back below the 15 EMA 30 EMA is support you get the feeling that if we take out this low from a couple of weeks back at 2960 there's going to be some selling pressure you know it's it's we're, we're, we're approaching the FOMC in a week then pretty much you know the last hurrah for holidays, at least in the U.S., before uh, all the high school sports start back up and the, and the uh, people need to get back into, I don't know what that bar is, Jesus, what the hell is that? Um, you know, so we're, obviously the Fed meeting next week is important. Um, FT and the Wall Street Journal came out, speaking of the Fed, came out and um, Basically said they're going to cut 25 basis point at the next meeting. Um, I believe the odds of a 50% cut were a tad higher, and then came back down after uh, after the Fed basically said that you know John Williams' statements were very academic and nothing more. Uh, but anyhow, so S and P's, I, I do like selling it kind of actually really under this this Thursday low 29.70 kind of just below here um so reading some stuff on the DAX DAX looks like it could be you could come under some pressure through Thursday's low as well um let's take a look at the 10 years you know 10 years had a nice little bounce uh these are the futures so higher Futures lower yields had a nice little bounce here. We covered some um, the week ago. Some of our shorts, you know, we were fortunate enough to be short up in I think it was right around 103, and uh, we were able to cover some about a you know full point lower. Um, and then you know we've had this nice bounce, and you know it's about a 50% retrace. Um, oil. Is going on. Something's going on with trading views charts. Um, I don't know what I don't know what that is. I can't even show that to you. So we'll skip it. Um, here's gold. Gold had a you know big bearish engulfing. Almost took out the previous previous day's low on uh, that Thursday low. And um, one that we're watching very closely here is silver. Um, if we pull up a weekly silver chart, here's the breakout. This is going way back. You know, silver has been lagging gold, and if you look at the gold-silver ratio, you, you can see it. 
Um, but we did have a, this is a pretty decent breakout, you know, above multiple weekly highs. It's a nice downtrend line. Uh, we do think that that's going to catch up. And actually, I'd prefer as a pair trade, rather be long silver than gold. Um, you know, Copper is another one that's seemingly basing. Um, you know, it was under a lot of pressure, had about, I don't know, seven or eight days of selling pressure. But I'm watching I'm watching that pretty closely. Um, what else do we have in the um, crude oil? I can't show the chart. Let me see if I can pull up a weekly, maybe, the, or a daily, I mean, because that, uh, maybe that's just on a weekly that, now that chart's just completely screwed up. Anyhow, it was down about 7.5% last week. Um... There was one other bit of research that I read that the ECB meeting coming up this week, um, there was an article saying that they're going to restart government bond purchases as early as November. Um, and there's a 50% chance of a 10 basis point cut for this week, which I found kind of high. I don't think they're going to do anything. Um, one other thing I was reading was the Kiwi seasonals, Kiwi and Sterling seasonals in August are quite poor and um, it's you know it's got me leaning on the left hand side so that could potentially be a trade of the week for us um, being short Kiwi and uh, you know I'll do my conference call with our colleagues but this is something definitely on my radar you know this is more of a a couple week trade you know might not have to be short just yet but Definitely want to play it from the short side in the month of August, depending on how price action and where we are technically. Um, so I, yeah, I'm gonna. I think I'll 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 be leaving some orders to sell it back up here near that 6780. Um, not much data out here uh, the first day of the week. We Tuesday we got Bank of England's Haldane. Um, we got a bunch of flash PMIs, uh, China PMIs. On Wednesday, that looks like kind of a, a big day just for the, um, you know, give us a good good feel for how the, the PMI data is performing. Um, on Thursday, we've got the ECB meeting. Again, I as I mentioned earlier, there's a 50% chance of a 10 basis point cut. we got German IFO, which will be a good barometer of how the German manufacturing is doing and then uh, RBA low speaks but then Friday it looks um, I believe it was UBS saying they're expecting kind of a blockbuster US GDP it's a, the advanced GDP number um, I believe it was like 2.6 or 2.9 um, look through the notes here which is much better than what the the uh, consensus is on the Bloomberg estimates and then uh, looking ahead to next week, we got the FOMC. So anyhow, um, I guess trades of the week, things that we're looking at initially, um, definitely looking to sell some Kiwi rallies. Um, I want to sell the break here in the S&P, we'll call it through 2960. Um, daily close under 29.70 even could be could be interesting below that Thursday low, and um, and then that silver breakout. You know it's it's pretty overbought short term obviously, and you know we had this massive move from 15.20 to 16.60 was it? Um, gee, yeah, that's a that's a big parabolic move. So looking at looking to buy kind of pullbacks to this uh, to this weekly line at which we might not even get it's way down at 1540 um, but we'll be looking to buy dips in that and um, and then the DAX it looks like it's rolling over and some of our other proprietary um, technical signals have the DAX has shown up on the radar so I've been we've been watching it now for a few days but my guess is any any sort of break of the um, that's on a weekly. You know we we've kind of rolled over 
under the 15, under the 30 day. My guess is that we can go all the way back here, 11,626. Um, you know, with maybe a little pause here, right around 12,000. But I, I do like this. Uh, we, we feel like the equity market is starting to roll over. And uh, some of the weak longs that, that put longs on over 3,000, the S&P, um, they're going to start feeling pain pretty quickly. Um, you know, I'll take a look at the positioning tomorrow. Other than that, uh, expect a, a quiet uh, session for you in Asia. You'll hear from us on the European Open. And um, we'll update you with some of our trade ideas uh, as the week progresses. All the best. Have a great week of trading. Cheers.